everyone, and welcome again to another Two Question Tuesday. I'm Bryant Duvon, Editor-in-Chief of uh, Document Image and Report. Uh, we have with us today uh, someone who is great at all things information uh, management related, uh, Jed Cawthorn, who's had a varied, uh, very, very, very career. Uh, he is the currently the Principal Evangelist at Shiny Docs. Uh, Jed, thanks for, thanks for joining us today, and let's dive right into that first question. Um, Hello, mate. Now, you've done a lot of writing and research around security, and I'll, I think I'll, I'll see if I can find a photo of you in, a, in your knight's outfit to, to add to this. Um, so what do organizations need to understand to keep their content secure? Uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, a, a great question, and, and one that could be huge and, and could be very broad and very long. So let's try and squeeze it down a bit. Um, I would say... That, there's a number of core factors in, in what does a, a, uh, an organization need to understand about its content and its information, its data when it's thinking about security. It's like, first off, what have we got, right? You can't really consider how to secure your assets if you don't understand what they are. Um, part of understanding what they are is also where they are and where you have them stored. Um, the different systems or repositories within which they are stored might have different security um, capabilities around securing them. Um, not all systems are equal and, and some have fancy features and functionalities that others don't. So what you have, where it is, who's using it, uh, who needs access, what business processes this um, information feeding, um, and then really the, the key requirement of that should be driven by your, your line of business partners, um, you know, and, and then you get to the crux of the matter, which is like, mm, is this needed by everybody, but at the same time, it's secret because now we get to the nitty gritty, you know, you actually need the information to feed a business process or multiple business processes. But at the same time, there's some tension because you need, you know, it's full of PII, it's full of health information, it's full of um, product development roadmap secrets that you don't want to share yet, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so we get that tension between who needs access uh, and why, and that's driven by the business processes, and who you think you want to constrain access to because you're worried about it getting out and, and um, <laughs> maybe running a mock. So I think that's always a tension, you know, um, and it always has been and it always will be. Um, modern systems help us with that. Um, modern tools have the capabilities to do roles based access or um, other ways to secure information. Um, we've come a long way with progressing just past thinking about external threats and firewalls mm -hmm. to thinking about um, potentially nefarious internal actors. And now, so we have data loss prevention tools. Um, so DLP helps us think about, well, even if your permissions say you're allowed to access this information, the DLP rules say, yeah, sure, you can access it, but you can access it read only, you can read it on your laptop. You're not allowed to print it. You're not allowed to email it to anybody, you know, things like that. So the tools, you know, technology progresses. The tools have got better. Things, you know, as they become more advanced, uh, often also, actually, people take, um, like, the whole user experience kind of uh, element into account. And so sometimes they actually get simpler and easier to use, too. Um, so more powerful and more simpler, the Holy Grail. But yeah, I think, you know, hopefully that answers the question. It sounds like a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, an easy, it's an easy issue to address, right? Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, hand in hand with security, at least in my mind, and, and this is partly inspired by the fact that you, you spent a little bit of time earlier this week at, at ARMA, um, at an ARMA event in Canada. Um, mm. So what is the role that information, information governance plays um in the con in the context in the context of security it seems like it seems like you kind of need both to be to be fully uh, to be fully secure as well as fully fully compliant 
Yeah, I mean, and, and so I, I was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at uh, the Armour uh, Canada conference. So I apologize for my conference voice. Um, there was a lot of conversation and, and on this particular topic. And um, people were approaching it from different angles. Um, I was certainly talking to um, one lady who is who who wears multiple hats, bless her. She has quite a broad portfolio, but it included privacy. Um, and so you get the intersection of the privacy field and let's call it legacy security. So, you know, maybe when we think of security, we think of a chief information security officer or an infosec group. Uh, and they may, they might have driven things in the past, and so they would be uh, a key stakeholder for your information governance people to talk to and work with and collaborate with. Um, and now there's this third set. Of, you know, we add another blob to the Venn diagram, um, and we bring in the privacy professionals um, who might rely upon the chief information security officer and the infosec team to secure things, but from a privacy perspective. And it brings a different business view and a different set of drivers. Um, so I think that Venn diagram with the three blobs is actually infosec, privacy, and information governance. And then maybe if you are in a regulated industry, the fourth blob is compliance. And they could be sat in legal, they could be sat in IT. It kind of depends on your industry and your organization. So if we go back to the first question, if you think about it in, in that kind of holistic view, your information governance professionals have a point of view from a certain perspective, and they need to uh, work closely with the InfoSec team, the privacy team, and also with the business stakeholders. So it could be that your information governance people are actually somewhat pivotal in that because they have a good relationship and a good understanding of the business needs, um, which maybe uh, I can't tire everybody with the same brush, but maybe InfoSec because, you know, they're very worried about external threats and, and firewalls and all intrusion detection and all that good stuff. And privacy are very much driven by privacy legislation. Maybe the information governance professionals have a role in helping all these different viewpoints and all these different elements come together um, and making it easier for us all to work together. Because I guess, you know, if you take a historic view of information governance and boil it down to records management, that's not a million miles away from what privacy are trying to do in some respects. So I think it is complex and it gets more complex on a regular basis, right? Because different um, uh, jurisdictions keep adding new rules and regulations. And obviously privacy right now is the hot topic in that respect. Um, whether we all just got comfortable with GDPR and now we have to deal with California um and, and all the other us states that are trying you know coming up with their own obviously up here in canada we've had pepida which is our federal regulations for a long time and provinces have their own regulations too so it only ever becomes more complex people strangely enough don't take away regulations <laughs> they just they just add new ones so i think for information governance professionals the they need to keep that in mind uh they need to still talk to infosec the old threats don't go away you know nasty external state-sponsored hackers are still gonna go try and crack your systems and steal your stuff that hasn't changed but what we have had is, is new factors like the privacy legislation so it's unfortunately a... everybody guess what it only gets tougher <laughs> yeah and we haven't even talked about ai or anything like that so um that's our two questions but but I am gonna, I am gonna, I am gonna ask you, and I'm gonna ask you an unofficial third. So mm -hmm. the flag, the flags behind you, see the three lines and the and the Fleur de Lis. That's French and yep. England, and and a combined yep. combined um, British monarchy flag, if I'm not mistaken. 
Yep. Uh, but the one on the the one over your left shoulder there with the with with the flower and the starburst or the sunburst behind it. Yep. Which one's that one? So um that is called um the rose in the sun and it's it got the the motif of a rose and a sun is it goes quite far back in medieval history. Um but in English history it's to do with the wars of the roses. Um and the House of York versus the House of Lancaster. Um, but actually, it is also the emblem of the um, uh, historical reenactment group I'm a member of. And we are um, La Compagnia della Rosa nel Sol, which is the company of the Rose in the Sun. Oh, OK, I was curious. So um, thank you. Uh, thank you more for the uh, for the for the uh, questions and, and answers around security and information governance, but also uh, for the flag explanation as well. Uh, Jed, as always, great to talk to you. And you, mate. Thank you very much.